I think there very easily could be a base EU, right? There's a situation, I mean, as I said in the video, you've got Maloney there, uh, who has literally been talking to Keir Starmer this week about how to tackle immigration. Uh, AFD possibly coming in, in in parts of Germany. I don't see those trends decelerating. I don't see any leftward shift in Germany or Italy in the, in the coming future because the support for the the right wing parties is from the young right and if we know anything young people don't get more left as they grow older they get more right wing so if you've got like the base youth voting now you can basically count on them becoming more and more <laughs> right wing as, as things as things progress and get worse so i do see italy germany and Fra france as well um who are <clears throat> strangely excluded from Evola's talk about the two eagles. Um, can't remember what Evola says about the French, but I think he says that they're always caught between their Catholic side and their Protestant side and stuff like that. But uh, you'd have to go back and read. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, those three countries, France, Germany and Italy, I, I can see them becoming more quote unquote based right and um if you then have a based eu where does britain stand in relation to that um the trouble is is that let's pretend that you had a fully based europe and a fully based britain right i still think there's something in the english mentality the british mentality overall that sees themselves as being different from the continentals. It's not just language. It's there's something else. There's a different, how can I put it? There's a, that kind of German love of being part of the big organization, the big system. I don't think British people have got that. I think they do like their own little, I mean, these are cliches, but you know, the, the, the private castle, the private, the private garden, wanting to be left alone and all of that. I, I do think those are deeply ingrained parts of the character of this nation, which is one of the, one of several reasons why Brexit happened in the first place. It's not the only reason. I, I, I also think there are, American interests, certain American interests that promoted Brexit as well, or that were happy that Brexit happened. Um, but in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ironic way, what Britain was doing in the EU was making it more, was making it more woke. But Britain was the one making the EU more liberal, more woke, more, um, you know, feminist and all that sort of stuff the argument was always that the, it was the eu imposing these things on britain but i think that if you really dig down into what i mean i have a video next week called woke imperialism where a lot of this is discussed i think you'll find britain was the liberalizing always the liberalizing factor in europe as a point man for america to impose american ideology on europe so, in a way, Brexit happening gives Europe license to be more based, not less based. Because you don't have the David Cameron in the room or the Tony Blair in the room anymore. <laughs> um, I mean, that's my view, uh, but I would say that because I voted Remain, didn't I? Um, <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't... I. I to, to be honest, though, I don't see England's destiny as being tied to Europe's. Um, it's that thing of being the the island nation, the seafaring nation, the piratical nation, if you want to put it that way. It's not part of the big, it's not part of whatever it is the Germans are doing. And I don't think, I mean, it would be good for if you want to think in terms of like the European race or something, it would be good if 
Britain was more of a team player in that sense, but it's not. It just it's not in its its mindset is to want to impose its vision on everywhere else, not have an envision imposed on it from the outside, even if it's from Germany or France or something like that. Britain's never going to take that. It's always going to want to impose, you know, its view of the truth, um, whatever that is. At the moment, it has it happens to be woke. At other times in history, it was different visions, you know. Uh, I just don't think it's possible, you know, that there's a truth in that idea that, in the national anthem of uh, the Britons never wanting to be slaves type thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, Khalifa K, and you, you could ask, well, how come they take it from America then? But I think there's an extent to which a lot of British people just see America as an extension of itself. And a lot of Americans see Britain as, an ex as, a, as the old country, they call it. But there's more of an affinity there or at least there has been historically, than um, meets the eye. And this is especially seen when viewed through uh, German or Italian eyes. When you, when you read Italian writers like Evola or German writers like Vogel, how they view Britain and America always coming as a package and having the same values and being basically part of the same project. Um, so unfortunately, I think the that is a much more difficult knot to untangle. And um, I think anti-Americanism in this country is not very popular. It may have been at one point, but I don't think it is very popular. Um, I'm interested that there is a growing literature drawing attention to American influence here. Um, there's that one vassal state. There's another one that came out with that left-wing press. In fact, if you bear with me, it came through the post. Oh, here it is. It's called Someone Else's Empire by Tom Stevenson. So there's that one. There's Vassal State. There's a few others that came out as well. Where, where left-wing writers are basically asking a lot of the same questions that I've been asking that were highlighted in Oceans Apart, you know, the Adam Curtis documentary. And um, I'm interested by the fact the left is thinking along these lines because that makes it more likely. I mean, it, there's a strange convergence between uh, the stuff I've been saying and like what Aaron Bastani is covering on Navarra Media. And it's not just because of the, it's not just because of the, you could say shared blood between me and Bastani. I think there's something in the ether that people are kind of noticing. And uh, since Brexit, it's been really obvious, I think, that um britain is america's point man in the world so yeah all right let's carry on uh yeah but my my answer is england set england's destiny is separate from europe's um and in in a way i wish that wasn't the case it would be easier if it wasn't the case but it just is the case um and I kind of, I don't know, it swings and roundabouts because I know that um, some people say things like, well, no more brother wars and things like this. But actually, the conflict of Europe, the fact that, you know, the English don't like the French and the French don't like the Germans and uh, the Germans see themselves as the best and so on. That was that competition between the European nations was the engine room of what made Europe great. It wasn't the English and the Dutch and the Italians and so on all working together to, to, to conquer the world. They were actually competing with each other to conquer the world. And, and in a way, this is the tragedy of, of the two world wars. The two world wars have put the idea of conflict between the European nations out of, like, out of, the imagination, it's basically made it impossible to think of, imposed by the massive lesbian stiletto of America. Um, but there's an argument to say that the historic greatness of Europe was in its competition between itself. Or at least it has been for the past thousand years. You can make different arguments, and this is where 
the pagan imperialism stuff comes in, you can make different arguments, as Evola does, that, well, there wasn't competition in Roman times, was there? There was just Rome. And Rome was great too, you know? So there's swings around about different ways of thinking about it. But again, I tend towards believing that competition is a great engine room, which you could argue is a very Anglo attitude, couldn't you? Um, you know, you don't get to choose where you were, how you're formed, I guess, where you're born. And this dictates how you think, I guess, or what your mentality is. Um, 